Thank you for inviting me in this nice conference. And I really enjoy the discussion here. But today my talk will be quite different from the others, at least at two different aspects. The first one, I'm basically an electrical engineer, try to learn more from neuroscience. But still have problem to show my slide on the screen. Let's see. Okay. So I'm basically engineers and my research interest reside in higher cognitive functions than many of you. So that's the first difference. The second difference at this new project session, I will talk more on what I will do than what I have done. So the project I'm talking about for artificial cognitive system is something I will do in, from now on. Before I go on, I'll talk about the Korean node because we just joined INCF and we are supposed to build Korean node. There are several things I'd like to include at the INCF Korean node. The first one, database. We have operated three Tesla functional MRI machine for eight years that has been supported all the Korean cognitive science researchers. So we obviously have many three Tesla MRI machine. But the question is which one we need to select and we find we try to convince the other researchers because the researchers do not belong to KAIST, they belong to all other organizations. So I need to convince them. The second one, the Professor Joe at Gatchen University has seven Tesla MRI machine. He has a lot of data, but it's maybe quite difficult to convince him to put his data on the public domain. Then we also have multi-model data for higher cognitive function. I'll talk about that a little bit later. For the tool, we have DTR, or you also have SPM for near infrared spectroscopy. I think that's okay. We also have some multimodal data integration tools later on. For the models, we have some experience on auditory pathways that include feature extraction, binaural processing, and top-down attention. And then we'll also have audio-video integration model. So that's the thing I'm thinking right now, but again, it requires a lot of work, and also we need to convince other guys. Let's see how it will turn out later on. This is the picture at the top level. When I try to convince the funding agency and government officers say, okay, we have a neuroinformatics that is having nice database and tools and models, then I need your support. And I say that way, the answer is obviously, what do you want to contribute? Do you want to contribute to the quality of life? I don't know you have similar problem or lot, but as you know, Korea is still developing country. It has not been developed yet. So the government always asks for some contribution to their industry. So I need to convince them this neuroinformatics will contribute to Korean industry, the welfare of Korean people anyway, then maybe the welfare of the whole universe, etc. So in that sense, I also need to discuss eventually this neuroinformatics will contribute to certain things. And the certain things include science, medical, and engineering, and we also have education. Fortunately, Stan talked about all this in his talk already, so I do not go on details, but my area is here. So I like to come up to the engineering application using this neuroinformatics. Another reason I focus on this one is, as you know, Korea is relatively well situated on this information technology than the others. 
This is the picture I borrowed from IEEE Spectrum for the Society of Human Robot Coexisting Framework. So that's the future we have. So we like to come up with something like this one that live together with human. To do so, this one should come up with some intelligent, human-like intelligence. That's what I'm doing. So in that sense, I'll talk about three different research programs. The first one we have done for the last 10 years, and then these two has just started. So it is, that's the reason I said I will talk more on what we will do in the future. And basically, we have emphasized perception at this stage, but now we are moving to more higher cognitive functions. Then also talk about several different levels of neuroscience from the gene to the behavior. So I don't go on detail, but the area we are interested in is around here. So we don't want to go down below the neuron. So we have actually interested in functions. But on the other hand, we have both the data measurement, web modeling, and application all together. So this is the area I'll talk about. We also have neurobiology researchers in Korea, but they, don't, they are not interested in mathematical modeling. So they reside in here. So I'll skip that part. <laughs> when I say it this way, there are criticism from both sides. From neuroscientists, they always say, you do not know enough scientific knowledge for engineering application then how you say you will utilize the knowledge for intelligent machine. The other way they said is the model you have is not biologically plausible or biologically inspired, etc. So, but I'll talk about this a little later. But we also have criticism from engineers. So sometimes I call I'm a bat. I'm not a bird, but I'm not a pyramid, so it's, I have enemies from both sides. But from the engineers, they said, why do we need neuroscience? We have done well even without that. Okay? So but what I said is, I want to come up with intelligent machine, but I don't know how to do it. But the only thing I know is human is doing that very well, so I'd like to learn it. So the only thing I can say about it. But for this criticism, we need to have a lot of answers. And then this is one picture I showed to the government people. We are blind men try to figure out elephant. Okay? So if you have 10 blind men try to look at a certain part of elephant and come up with this picture, you don't know what's going on. But as David and other people already discussed, we have algorithm, they had a method to figure out the connections among the brain. So if you put that relative spatial relationship of these 10 places, you may see something. And then we add some knowledge based on information technology, especially in these cases, if there is edge, that edge can be easily extrapolated. So I just extra extrapolate all the edges then I come up something like elephant. But still it is not good enough because the nose and legs are not clear here. Then you have temporal information. Then you come up the shape of the elephant. This is the way I try to convince the non-scientific people. We can come up with something better from the poor resolution data, both time and space. But if we add both spatial and temporal information and also the, some information theory, it may come up with something. The Brain Neuroinformatics Research Program we have done for the last 10 years has two goals. The first one, try to understand the mechanism and then try to come up with something intelligent machine. So this was the logo we used from here. We learned how to make this guy. It has been the national research program involved by many professors and many graduate students. And unfortunately, Kai and myself had read through this project. And this was the final demonstration program we had. 
I'm sorry, the voice audio is not working, but this was one of the demonstration system we have. We have two microphones, two ears, etc. So it tries to communicate with human, with voice and video. So it has sound localization capability, and it has attention using both audio and video, and maintain conversations, and provide services as secretary. So the name is artificial secretary. It Okay, I'll skip this part. So some of the technology we included in this artificial secretary include the audit modeling of human auditory pathway that has been quite successful to solve cocktail party problem. So this guy was supposed to work in my office or in my living room and many people, my friends came in and watching TV, the football, and they are making noises. But when my wife says something, this robot is supposed to hear my wife's voice. Otherwise, I have a big problem. Okay? So, but this my guys make very loud noise. So we should hand, take care of this noise, even though my wife is voice is small, get up the bigger noise, etc. That kind of thing was quite easy for human, but not easy for machine at this moment. So this is the simplified diagram of human auditory pathway cutting across my the ears, the two ears, the signal coming from the cochlea going to, up to the auditory cortex and go to the higher language area. That's come up with so many feature extraction. And also, the, as superior olivary complex, the signal from both left ear and right ear come together and then going up for the sound localization and speech enhancement. And also, there are top-down pathways up to, down to the cochlea that I think that work for the top-down attention. So we try to model this three functionality of human auditory pathway to solve the co cocktail party problem. And again, I said we try to incorporate information technology so this is one of the things we did, is we collected many human speeches and see what kind of basic features human speech reside using information technology. It turns out I showed 50 basic features in time domain and frequency domain that is similar to that extracted at cochlea. At the later part, imperial curriculums, etc., then we have speech features that have both time and frequency characteristics that also be realized. And then for the binaural sound localization, we did some algorithm that works well even in noisy situations. And then we do speech enhancement. This is top down, this is the simple example I usually show for the top down attention because when I'm happy, it's, I see beautiful girl here, but I, when I'm not happy, I saw ugly old lady. So that's the definition of top-down attention. And we incorporate this top-down attention as the estimation of the sensory data based on top-down cue, and then we come up with much better speech recognition system using all the three different models we are incorporating. So that's for the first phase of the neuroinformatics research program. And then from last year, I started a small research program called Artificial Cognitive System. It does, it's based on the perception part, we saw almost some, has some improvement. Then we try to move to higher cognitive function. It's starting with active learning and then knowledge in situation awareness, decision making and behavior. So then utilizing all this and then train to specific applications for artificial secretary or autonomous driver can be used for example. This is another picture I borrowed from IEEE Spectrum again. So when the machine or robot see this kind of picture or video clip, it should understand what kind of situation it is. Obviously two people, one has gone, the other guy has to hands up then it should be lovely or it look at the background, there is cigarette pack and liquor bottle, so I should say it is uh, the bank lovely in liquor store in United States because there are some letters in English. 
So I like to understand what are the five W and one H for the video clip. And then another thing is, is it simple to decide as a bank robbery, or as a liquor store robbery? What if these two guys are friends and they just make fun of each other? So it's, it's the, in that case, if the, my robot found this set, thought this is a uh, liquor store robbery and killed this guy, then that's the end of the robot industry on the earth. So this should be quite careful to make decision. So that's why we that need the active learning. So if the, you have less confidence on the data, you should come up with some new data you should look for. That's the same as student. When a student is not good enough for certain area, they need to find good answer, a good question to the professors and come up with the answers. And then the knowledge is consists of the features, like if you have this kind of blocks, then you should understand what are the basic building blocks of these features to understand the basic thing. So this final goal is we have, and eventually, the thing I like to develop new Turing test. So I have many video clips. Each video clips, I ask my machine and human to give me answer of 5W1H. And if the machine did better than a human with IQ 130 and did fully than IQ with 140, then the machine IQ may be around 135. That's the way I try to define the intelligence of my machine. The brain neuroinformatics research program eventually come to second phase from this year. Actually, it just started this month. But it's, this new program, we emphasize intention. So we try to understand human intention. Obviously, at the previous situation awareness, you also need to understand the intention of both human. But here, I also said, in addition to the intention expressed by the people, we are also interested in understanding implicit intention. So if I say something, but that may be different from my actual intention. So lie may be one example, but there are many other ways you can formulate the intention. For example, this is another picture I borrowed from the so opera lied to me. So if you just look at these two guys, you just see they are falling in love with each other. But if you look at this guy, he's chasing something suspicious. So human audio and video is quite capable of understanding this implicit intention, but so far no machine can do this. To understand that, I try to come up with multimodal measurement. So we come up with this both fMRI and EEG, then we also have audio and video, and we try to convert both audio and video, come up with the same the functionality. In summary, I, we emphasize both functionality and multimodality, because functionality, we are looking for some killer application that utilize neuroinformatics for their success as a basic element, and then we also need multimodality, both is the spatial and temporal resolution, and also the new knowledge based on information technology. And then this is, sorry, the final thing again. So we, I believe the neuroinformatics will contribute to the quality of life in 21st century, both in Korea and also around the world. And then the neuroinformatics should be the mean to connect neuroscience people or medical people or engineering all together because these guys don't talk to each other. They need some kind of middleman to make them talk together. That should be the neuroinformatics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, is there any question or comment? Yes, Stan.
Thank you for a very nice, nice talk. It's, it's really important to have have the outreach as we have had to uh, to to engineering and, and robotics. To to con uh, concrete question, your your secretary there, mm -hmm. she also had expression of emotions in in terms of the eyebrows, right. etc. Right. Right. Was so, that important for the communication? Well, uh, the one thing I said is this machine should not be regarded as machine. So if you regard this as a machine, sure. it is not helpful to you anymore. Mm. So what I believe is for the society of human machine coexisting society, mm. human should regard machine as human. But if the machine does not have emotion, that means it just reply the same way as the mm -hmm. same input you give them, then people will think that's machine, not the human, so their service will not be proper, appropriate for you. So I think the emotion or in the future, the self-identity may be important part of the okay. intelligent machine. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, if if not human, a friend anyway. And uh, second question: uh, You had the expression "proactive learning." Right. Does that correspond to the upbringing of a child, or? Or uh... well, what I mean is the current learning technology just to use whatever data provided mm. by some other people, but human is not that way. And I try to figure out myself and then which part of knowledge I need to improve. Mm -hmm. So then I ask the proper question to somebody and incorporate the result into my knowledge system. Okay. So the, in this case, I say proactive. Sometimes I call active, sometimes proactive learning. Mm -hmm. Means I need to figure out what I need to improve mm -hmm. and ask question and then improve my knowledge based on it. So for the the photo clip I show, if the two, they, the machine may think there is a liquor store library, but the machine is not sure of exactly, then the next thing she needs to do is to looking at the two guys, identify two person, and then whether they are friends or not. Mm. So that kind of additional knowledge she needs to figure out. He need it and then get it and mm. go for into the analysis. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other? If not, so uh, thank you very much. We thank are you. Ready.